Hello vlog, welcome to episode 4 of the Consistent Creator and this one here, it should be a really interesting one. I want to talk about college, more, more so Harvard and you know the, these nostalgia brands and the, and the way people think about them. So as I mentioned in episode 3, uh, I met a real estate investor and developer named uh, Mr. Johnson. and. Another point that Mr. Johnson was advocating for was college and Harvard and saying how he's a strong advocate for sending his grandchildren to Harvard because he feels like they're going to get a great education and that it's going to help them prepare them for the future. Now, uh, here's why I disagree. First of all, yes, Harvard is very important. And then he tried to use the example of saying that if his grandchild graduated from Harvard with a degree versus another person that's applying for the same position and they didn't go to Harvard, who would I think they choose? Now, I get it where he was trying to use a point and he was trying to use a psychological trick in which to validate his point, he was going to give me an option which he knew that more likely I had to say yes to further validate his point. But I was already onto this. So yes, even though if his grandchild went to Harvard versus somebody that didn't went to Harvard, more likely they're gonna take that person into consideration. But here's the thing, the world is changing. Technology is changing. Things that was once important 20 years ago are no longer that important. And then on top of that, a lot of these big companies like you know, Apple and Google and all of these big tech companies in the valley they're no longer requiring a college degree they're building their own universities so in a way they kind of prefer you come in with a clean slate so they can teach you what they want to teach you I tell a quick story on how I was able to get you know to become a banker versus people that had experience when I was working at the bank and I applied for a banker's position and you know, there were people, I felt intimidated. There were people in there that had 10, 20, 30 years of experience. And I'm like, how am I going to compete with them? But I was just like, you know, I'm just going to give it a shot. And after I got the job, I asked my assistant manager. I said, hey, Debbie, you know, I noticed that there were people that, you know, had way more experience than I had. What made me got the job? Number one, they said they like my personality. I don't like how, you know, I was really going to come in and do what I said I was going to do. But she told me that she said, Joe, more importantly, you even though you didn't have a lot of experience, we can train you and we can mold you to think the way we want you to think and to act accordingly in certain situations. So as you can see, even though these people had way more experience, I was also very adaptable. Not only that, a lot of times... The older you get, you get more stuck in your ways. You don't really want to adapt. You really don't want to learn new things. You feel like, I've gotten this far with the knowledge. I've gotten this far with thinking why I think. Why should I change now? Give me one good reason why I should change now. So, uh, my thing is this. First of all, I don't think college is pre preparing students for the workforce. And I don't think they're going to prepare them in the future. I have a college degree. I went to college. And I hate to say, but I've learned more things after college than when I was in college. You know? I have an idea for a book and stuff like that. But I'll, I'll give you a sneak peek. But um, here's, here, here, here's, here's a couple of reasons why, you know, college is important. Why employers want college. First of all, number one, is that when you get a degree, it signifies completion. Anybody can register for classes, and anybody can, you know, register for classes and, and pass exams. But do you have the stamina, do you have the world thought to actually go through all four years or whatever the requirement is and actually get that degree? Can you actually complete it? So that's the number one thing is they want to say, okay, you have a college degree, they know you went through completion. Number two is, uh, is, is, is adversity or difficulty. Anything that takes more than one year or even a year or more, they know that there's going to be some difficult. There's going to be some adversity thrown your way. So they want to see how well do you handle adversity. Getting back to point number one about the whole completion thing, 
when it's, it, it shows that you're able to get stuff done on a certain timeline at a certain date so if they give you a certain project they want to see how confident or how do they minimize their risk on achieving that goal or getting that project done can you can you get stuff done on time can you get deadlines so that's why number one college reason why college is so important to employers is because of completion it signifies that you know how to get stuff done and you know how to get it done on the deadline uh, number two is adversity it shows that you're able to um, it, sh it, sh it shows that you know you're able to handle adversity and number number three uh, teamwork and negotiation you're gonna have to they know that in college you have to work on teams there's certain classes that you can't uh, you can't get out of that class unless you work on the team and that gives you the experience to see well how you work with others in the workforce so the third reason why college is important to prospective uh, empl employers is because they want to see how well do you, how well can you manage relationships with others and how good are you negotiating with others because there are going to be times when you're not going to get everything that you want. So you're going to have to negotiate it properly in order to get that. And the fourth thing is, is that it will be uh, longevity. Like the higher the probability of you stand on that job because it's expensive to replace you know you on that job if they hire you so if you got a college degree okay cool he was able to last the whole he or she was able to last the whole four years in order for them to get this degree that means that more than likely they have they'll have a long tenure and we won't have to you know we can keep our employment and and training development costs down because we won't have to worry about somebody that you know when it when it gets rough or whatever they decide that you know that they want to um, that they want you know pursue another career or get another job so that's another reason why you know prospective employers you know want college but getting back to this like I said I don't think that college is it's gonna be you know preparing kids especially in the future with everything you know hyper speed hyper growth in, in this society I highly doubt that, you know, like I said, college is going to be adequate. Whether it's Harvard or not, you know, and not only that, the Harvard and the prestige, it is, I could be wrong, but it doesn't hold the same weight that it did in the 90s, in the 2000s, you know. When you told somebody you was going to Harvard, it was like, whoa, man, because, you know, getting into Harvard, it's, it's, it's very difficult, you know, like I mentioned in episode two they have certain terms and conditions that you have to meet in order before they accept you but like I said Harvard used to be this mysterious thing you just be like wow you know you used to think people couldn't be human if they got into Harvard because it, the probability of you getting in was just so low so the whole thing of oh well I want my grandkids to go to Harvard because they're gonna have uh, a better education now education is is great I personally believe in civic education is way more important than formal education, but I, that could be a, uh, another episode at a later date. But I don't think that Harvard's gonna go to do it. Harvard, Cornell, Brown, Columbia, Oxford, I don't think none of them are gonna be able to prepare us, prepare us or even the future generations for the future, 10, 20, 30 years into the future. So that's just, um, that's just my perspective on, like I said, I, I don't, now, I will say this final point. From my perspective, I think the reason why he was so adamant about Harvard is because of the lineage and because of, you know, but mainly it's because of the network. If you go to Harvard, more than like you can tap into resources and you'll have a network that you can't get anywhere else. That is true. But here's the thing. All networks can be built. All networks can be cultivated. So just because you don't have a Harvard network or because you don't have a Harvard degree, that doesn't mean that you can't build a network on your own. That may potentially be even more powerful than you have in that Harvard degree. So, and not only that, degrees are not a barometer of success. We, we need to make sure that, you know, that we really um, stress that point that degrees are not a barometer of success. It takes, you know, uh, it's just like, you know, you can go back and watch episode one which I mentioned 
you know, the blueprint for achieving your dreams or for achieving a goal. So, uh, like I said, I'll just end with me. My personal opinion is I don't think that Harvard or any other educational institute is going to prepare you for the future. I feel like you have to take it upon yourself to invest in yourself. Uh, I mean, Warren Buffett, one of the greatest investors of all time, he said the best investment you can make is in yourself. So I feel like self-education is what can really uh, get you there. But the problem with self-education, that reason why, the two big reasons why most people don't do it is because, number one, they don't think that they're a great return on the investment. Uh, number two is because of sacrifice. There gonna be some times where you're gonna have to give up some things. And then more importantly than the three, they're gonna look at the cost, which goes back into the return on investment. If I invest $20,000 into this course, or if I keep this mentor and I pay them $10,000 or $20,000, would I get my return on investment? But that's because we're not willing to bet on ourselves. So, I feel like the best way to be financially independent or just to thrive in the future is to remember, always better yourself. You are the greatest investment that you can make. Have a good day. Simmons out.